Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I've had the pleasure of working with Cody Miller on Aridia for the last uh, almost four years. And one of the things that I've gotten to work on is the combat system. And today I want to show you a combat simulator that I programmed that is a gross simplification of the Heredia combat system, but still gets at some of the core ideas and allows us to make some high level sort of ballpark decisions about where the combat, where a given combat is going to be. So it is one of many tools in our toolbox. It is not the only thing by far that we use, but it's something. So I'm going to show it to you. I want to give you two warnings. One, when I built this, I did not build it to be public facing. It is an internal tool, but I'm going to show it to you anyway, because I think people might enjoy it. But please keep in mind, it's really ugly. And I didn't build it to be pretty. I just built it to be functional. So please don't judge me for how beautiful the website is. The, the second thing is this does not in any way replace playtesting or intuition or iterative design and development. It's just, it's just one of our tools. So there are a bunch of numbers. I'm going to explain them. I will say I'm not going to go into the details of how Aridia combat actually works. If you want to read about that, please check out the Kickstarter page. Please read the rule book that's been posted, any of those things but I'm not going to go into the actual rules of combat. The very basic idea is monsters take a turn, players take a turn, and on the monster's turn, they draw a threat card, and that threat card determines if threat increases, which will potentially increase damage later in the combat, or if they activate right now and, and inflict damage on the players right now. So that's like a 10-second overview of, of a of combat. There's obviously a lot more to it than that, but that's, that's the gross simplification. Okay, so... Let's let's take a look at this. All right, tons of numbers here. Just stick with me for now. Focus now on this area right in the middle, mob one. Basically, just to give an overview of this page, on the left side are a bunch of statistics. That's sort of the result of the simulation. On, on the right side are all of the variables that we can change and tweak to make the simulation run as we wish. All right, so this is mob one, and it's very similar to mob two. So. Some of the stats we can change are how many of them are there, how many hit points do they have, and at each of the threat levels, what, what threat level do they trigger at, and how much damage do they inflict. Now, obviously, there are a bunch of things that are missing from this. For example, whether or not they can get into range of the player and any other additional effects that are going on. So again, this is a real simplification. Right now, they guaranteed hit the player for this much damage. All right, so that's mob one and mob two. And you can see we also have boss one and boss two. This is the same idea, but just a different enemy type. So you have to keep that in mind. Okay, this particular battle, if we look at it, it has two uh, mob one, two mob two, and one boss one. And there is not a second boss. So there are a total of five enemies on the map when this battle begins. Okay, this area down here is player damage. So this is pre-calculates what you actually need to roll on the D20 to inflict this much damage. And obviously, if you know the Iridia combat system, it's not simply just one, two, three damage. You're doing a whole attack pattern, and there's a lot of strategy around where you inflict the damage and the critical points and the weak points and all of that. So again, gross simplification, but it's enough to still give us some information when we're doing high-level design tuning. Okay, this is number of players in the combat. Right now, this is just set up for one player and how many actions per player there are and how many hit points the player has. Again, this doesn't include armor, but we can fake it a little bit by basically thinking to ourselves, well, they have this much armor, so that probably equates to some number of extra hit points, so I'm going to put them at 10 hit points. Okay, and then this area over here is the threat deck or what it what the threat deck could be there are some cards that simply increase threat there are some cards that activate both mobs and bosses potentially in a different order and then there are some cards that activate mobs if they're around otherwise plus one threat or bosses if they're around and otherwise plus one threat so these are some cards 
that could exist in the threat deck. Okay, and then I will show you enemy AI. So enemies can target the player with the lowest hit points, a random player, or a player with the highest hit points. Obviously, in a single player simulation, this doesn't make any difference at all. It's always just going to be that one player. But as soon as we increase the number of players, this could this could matter more. And then the player AI is, do you want the player to go after the mobs first or the bosses first? And depending on how you set up the combat, you might think, well, the players will probably go after the mobs first in this combat. Or the way I've set this up, uh, probably the players will go after the boss first. Or what happens if they do the other thing that I'm not expecting? Then how badly does the combat go for them? So that is a very quick overview of sort of the things that we can input. And then this is just how many times the simulation is going to run. So I'm going to click this probability for the win, and then it's going to simulate 10,000 games. And you can see how long it takes. Okay, it's done. So that was 10,000 simulations of this combat. And obviously this is, again, a gross simplification of combat, but getting to run it 10,000 times really makes us have some confidence in the accuracy of, of at least given the assumptions that we're making what's happening. Okay, so let's look at let's look at some of these numbers up here. This is how many actions did the players take total and how many turns did the players have? This is slightly less than 3 because either the player didn't get uh, a full turn or because the combat ended on the player's first or second action or because the player got knocked out on the monster's turn. Another thing the simulation has does not have is adrenaline surge. So if you get knocked down, on the monster's turn, you're at zero hit points. You actually have one turn where you can stand back up, spend some stamina points, and and have a chance to defeat the monsters. That this simulation doesn't have this. They assume this simulation currently assumes that if you go down, you're just down. And again, simplification, but it gets us basic idea. All right, and this is how much damage the players inflicted. Similar information about the mobs and the bosses, and this is the number of times the threat reached seven and triggered enemy attacks. So this is obviously not happening very much in this simulation. Okay, so this is this is a very important area, this who is who is still standing, which is on a given round, if you make it to round one, then who's gonna be standing at the end of that round? And this is if you make it to round two then on average, who's going to be standing at that point? So you can see that the monster numbers sort of steadily increase, decrease. First, we the, the mobs dwindle down from four, down to three, two, and then eventually get down to zero. And the boss, because we chose to target down here, we, we had the players target the mobs first. All of the mobs go away before the boss goes away. Okay, so that's why we're seeing these numbers. If you look at the player number, you might expect the player number to just go down sort of evenly. But in fact, what, what, we, what we see here is if the plan, player manages to make it over the hump and get down to get past round two, then they sort of uh, keep the same probability. It doesn't, it doesn't go down. They're not getting knocked out a bunch. And maybe, in fact, if you manage to make it to round eight or round six, then you're even, you know, even more likely to be standing. So it's important to realize what th what this table is saying. It's saying, if you make it to this round, then who's standing at that round? That's, that's different than sort of what are your chances of actually being alive at round four? If you want to know that, then you have to look down at this table, which is when the battle ends, we don't know what's gonna, when it's going to end, but when it ends, how many players have been KO'd? So if... Um, the the battle ends at round two, then only you, you never survive, right? This is a, this is a solo this is a solo game. So if one player has been KO'd, this whole column means party wipe, right? This is this is eighty seven percent of the time, depending on when the the round ends. Eighty seven percent of the time, one player has been KO'd, and only fourteen percent of the time when the battle ends, zero players have been KO'd, which means the solo player survived. So so this is um, a very quick and obvious way of saying like, this is a super bad, uh, battle for a solo player. 
Now, maybe we can look at this and say to ourselves, well, there are a lot of things that are inaccurate about this simulation. You know, these mobs would never attack at round one because they're too far away from the solo player. They won't be able to attack on round one, even if you draw the all monsters activate. So like you have to take this with a grain of salt. This is definitely just a first level pass. But seeing this, I might think to myself, well, maybe, maybe we should take a look at this combat. Something's going on here. Okay, so let's see what happens. Just as a very simple change, I'm going to change it to number of players being two. All right, so let's see what happens there. So all of a sudden, we now see, just looking, looking down here in the bottom left, when the battle ends, how many players have been KO'd, we now have more times that zero players are KO'd. This went up a lot because the enemy AI was random. So what that means is the both players have 10 hit points. And I should explain this player damage. This is this is the same for all all players have the same damage output and all players have the same number of actions and the same number of hit points. So our hit point pool just went up from 10 to 20. And because the enemy AI is random, then our survival rate goes up quite a lot. And maybe somebody gets still knocked out, but you know, a much smaller percentage of the time, we're getting a complete party wipe here. This is a 20% time that went down from 85% or 87% down to 21. Also, um, just in case ever anybody is doing math and noticing these numbers don't add up exactly to 100%, that's fine. This is, again, a very rough tool. What's happening is I'm rounding numbers. Like the simulation has decimal points out to however many, but when you're when you're doing a high level sort of rough tool, it's it's good to just round them. Like five point two is not useful because these are just ballpark numbers anyway, because we're making so many assumptions on on this side of things. Okay, the the other thing that I didn't that I didn't show, but I can talk about now is this activations table. This says when mob one activates which threat threshold is it activating at? Is it activating at threat zero, threat one, or threat three? Obviously, it doesn't ever activate. It doesn't ever spend two threat, four, five, six, or seven threat because it doesn't have a command to do that. You know, if I wanted to add this, you know, uh, if I change this to a two, then this, we would, we would, here, I'll just change it to a two really quick and you'll see. So now all of a sudden, sometimes mob one activates on two threat. But, this is a useful thing for us to see, which is that the vast majority of the time, the monsters in this combat are activating at threat zero. Threat zero is a very common way for mobs to activate. And in particular, you can see because this battle has both a boss and a mob, you can see that the boss is sometimes activating at a higher threat. And that's because I'm guessing we could play around with it, but I'm guessing because the player is targeting mobs first. So as the, and the boss just has more hit points. So it just can stick around longer and build up more. So we can play around with these numbers, see, see what appeals to us. Um, all right, let me, let me show you maybe one other thing. So let's go back to this solo this solo simulation, I'll put everything back just so we can go back to this, right? We're like, hey, 85%, that seems way too often. What happens, and, and this is just a thought experiment, we're not, we're not doing this, but what happens if we just mess with the threat deck a little bit um, for solo mode? Now, I think, I think potentially one way of balancing the game for easier, harder difficulty for players who want to make the game easier or harder for them is to mess with the threat deck. And so this is just a, a, an idea if we want to explore it. What happens if we modify the threat deck? So let's say we take out this card that activates both the, the mob and the boss. What will happen to these numbers? Okay, so I just removed one activation card. How much of a difference does that make? Not much, right? So this went, this, this really did not affect much of what happened. What happens if I get rid of both of the double activation cards? That's that made more of a difference, right? So we can we can start to play around with 
hey, let's experiment and see what happens, right? Another idea is what if we add a couple more plus one threat cards? What if we replace these dual activation cards with plus one threat and we, and we run that? Hey, that went down even more, right? And now, okay, if we're going to run it with two players, let's see what happens with this sort of threat deck with two players. Okay, great. Wow, you know, almost never with this sort of threat deck in this with all of these permutations, almost never do we have a whole party wipe. Okay, so these are some tools that we have to help us explore combat. I just want to acknowledge some of the future work that I could that I could do to add even more detail or fidelity to this. I, I'm not sure exactly how useful it is to add more detail because it's always going to be an estimate. We're always going to have to play test. We're always going to have to use our intuition as well. Um, but I'll just talk it through quickly. You right now, when combat starts in the actual game, the monsters are a certain distance typically away from the players. And you know that if that first top threat card is an activation card, how many monsters will be able to target the players. So there's some amount of chance that the monsters will have to move, but not actually attack the player. They'll try and move and attack the player, but even if they, they won't be able to. And so this simulation could have some sort of chance and acknowledge that, particularly special for round one. Also, currently, the players all have the same damage output. That might be worth it. And very importantly, I mean, healing is a huge part of combat because if you get knocked down, you stop being able to contribute damage. But healing, obviously, there are quite a few ways to heal in the game. That's not in the simulation at all. So that would also include adrenaline surge, letting you get back up. Also, there are going to be some big combats where you're going to want to go all out. You're going to have a bunch of mana that you want to spend or some other, you know, single use abilities that you'll spend on that combat. How, what does that do to the combat? So it would be nice if there was some way of acknowledging this is supposed to be a big battle and we expect the players to put more effort in, spend more resources. What does that look like? Also, no area attacks, you know, that would be nice, both monsters against players in, in, multi, in multiplayer games and, again, players against monsters. And um, I think this, if we could make it a little prettier, maybe it would be nice to have some um, icons on here. There's no implementation of player armor, just bonus hit points is sort of how it's implemented now, but we could be more elegant on that or more detailed on that. And there are no negative effects like, you know, um, being knocked down or anything like that. And it might be useful to know overflow damage for, you know, just for stats purposes could be fun. Okay, so I hope that's been helpful just to give you a behind the scenes look at this simulator. If you have questions, I'd be happy to try and answer. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much.